Hello and welcome to Inside the Women of Denver. I'm your host, Crystal Covington, and today's show will give you all the tools you need to brand yourself, navigate your budget, and confidently dive into your dreams and passions. Our first guest helps authors, entrepreneurs, and creatives develop their brands through storytelling. Her name is Bree Weber, and she's the founder of the book Octopus. Here to share her top tips for building your brand, telling your story, and getting your book out into the world. Hey, Bree. Hi, thank you for having me. Yes, of course. So I have personally put my story out there, and it is very vulnerable. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> so what is the first step for people who really want to share something, but they're too nervous about putting their story out into the world? Yeah, I think that's something that people tend to struggle with a lot. We think about marketing as and branding really as being this process where you kind of turn off your personal side and right. bring out this sort of car salesman, sort of old timey <laughs> yeah. figure. Um, and really, the branding process, creative marketing, is really about presenting this very vulnerable side of yourself yeah. to say, this is my story, this is what I've gone through. And when you share it with the right people in the right way, when you're clear about who you are and what your story is, you're yeah. gonna connect, you're gonna find those people who resonate with you. Yeah. So one of the first things that I like to tell clients is think about why you're doing this. Mm -hmm. When you kind of get to the core of what it is that you're trying to share and what your motivations are, yeah. you're probably gonna find something on the other side, who your target reader is, your target audience. Right. You'll start to understand what their core motivations are and how you're gonna connect over that same story. Yeah, I mean, one of the things that so I'm i professional in marketing, and you know one of the things that um, I found that people are most drawn to is those authentic stories and the things that they can resonate with as a human being. Yeah. If you're not touching people at the core of who they are, they're not going to take any action. Right. Action really comes from feeling. Exactly, and that's something I like to to bring up. Sometimes people talk about customer loyalty, right? What yeah. is that? That's just people saying you understand what I'm going through and, and we've connected, we've bonded over a value or a belief system mm -hmm. or some sort of experience. And branding is really just that cultivation of shared experiences. So when you can connect with the person on the other side of that book or a yeah. business or if it's a personal brand, your own story, that's when you're able to start cultivating some of those experiences and mm -hmm. then you're gonna have someone who's gonna wanna read the next book yeah. or check out the next product that you release. So what are some of the ways that people use their book to really kind of brand themselves? So books, especially if you're an entrepreneur mm -hmm. or if you are using a book to support your business, your book is just one way that you're sharing your experience or your message. Mm -hmm. So if you're looking to raise your profile, you are connecting with people through print or digital means, mm -hmm. and you're trying to share your story, but you're probably gonna be sharing that story in other ways, right? You're going to speaking events, yeah. you have your company, you have clients perhaps. So when you're looking to promote yourself using your book, you're basically just using that as a talking piece yeah. to share your story. So you might go on to, um, an inter into an interview, you might be sharing it with reviewers to mm -hmm. get their perspective, but that's just one platform that you're sharing your book through. Yeah. Yeah. And I know that writing a book can also get you those speaking gigs and podcasts and all <laughs> those kind of opportunities as well. Absolutely. People really view books, especially in the nonfiction realm, mm -hmm. as a source of credibility and authority. If you have taken the time to pour out all of your you know, thoughts and expertise yeah. on a topic and you can organize it into a way that people can connect with it, then that shows that you really do know this topic really well mm -hmm. and you can share your message or your story at the end of it. Yeah, so I was looking at your about page mm -hmm. and your background is so crazy <laughs> powerful. You've done Thank a lot you. of stuff. <laughs> <laughs> you just, I'm just like credibility, credibility, <laughs> credibility. You just got stacks of credibility <laughs> under your Thank belt. You. <laughs> so tell me a little bit about your background. Yeah, so I knew that I wanted to work in publishing and initially I was very excited about working in an editorial field in yeah. a large publishing house. And I went to the UK, studied for my master's in London. Mm -hmm. And through that program, I had a really great opportunity to work with some big names like yeah. Penguin and Macmillan. And I 
learned a ton about the publishing process in general yeah. so that when I moved to New York and I was working with agents, I had a sense of both from the publisher perspective but also now from an agenting perspective, mm -hmm. working with authors kind of from their perspective. So as I was kind of viewing this, this process of building a brand and publishing a book from these different angles, I realized I really love working with authors. I really like connecting with agents and publishers, but right. I want to be in a direct you know, partnership with the authors yeah. and the entrepreneurs that I'm working with. So I wanted to create a team for those authors. So even if you're looking to independently publish, or if you're looking to traditionally publish, mm -hmm. you have you know your own group that's going to support you just like you yeah. would if you were building a company. Because mm -hmm. quite honestly, that's what publishing a book is nowadays. You are creating a, a company and you yeah. are branding yourself to help get the word out there. Yeah. Awesome. So, um, you know, what are the things that you do right now? You know, some of the direct things that you do to support people in kind of reaching those goals. So obviously it depends on the goals, but in terms of some of the key parts of that process, I am constantly asking lots of questions. Yeah. You know, why are you writing this book? Why do you want to publish it? Why is it so important for you to share this message? Mm -hmm. And then a really key question that I s tend to spend a lot of time on with my clients is, why should people spend time and money on this product or this yeah. book? What value are you bringing to them? Because if you can kind of wrap your head around that perspective, again, mm -hmm. understanding that target market, what they're looking for, then you're going to be able to create an authentic connection with them. Yeah, yeah, beautiful. Yeah, I kind of went through, so I, I'm not like a big time published author or anything like that, but I wrote, <laughs> but I you wrote have a my great story. Yeah, yeah, I wrote my story, <laughs> but I came in with an intention. I knew mm -hmm. exactly what I wanted it for. I wanted it for my Women of Denver members. I wanted it to be a workshop resource when I go and teach right. my workshops. And then I wanted people to have something tangibly that they can write in and use. So I wanted it to be a tool. It wasn't just me like writing my story and talking about it, right. you know, and trying to tell people, this is how I got here and this is what I did. You know, it was about how are, you know, what did I go through mm -hmm. and how can, what makes me qualified to basically share this template with you. Exactly. And then how you can use this template to basically reach whatever, what is your level of success that you're looking for. Right. And, you know, it's stuff that I really use and I wanted to share with people. So that was what it was. I wasn't trying to be like, you know, get a bunch of book sales or go right. anywhere, but I had a specific goal and I achieved that goal with what I wanted. And then the people, outside of that started buying it and I was like, Which hey, awesome. yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's really cool. There's someone in France who's read my book. <laughs> you know? Exactly. Yeah. But like, and it, even in that case, it's a really powerful tool. You've yeah. created a, a dialogue, a conversation piece, really. Here's my story. Here's the steps that I took to get to where yeah. I am. You know, it's still in process. You are always moving towards something mm -hmm. else. But, you know, how can you use these tools? Do these apply to your situation? Yeah. How can you use this workbook to, you know, guide your story or yeah. record your story? And I think the most meaningful part of really putting that out there is that as soon as people have read it, there's been a lot of people that write me long emails or just a short, you know, text message or something and just say, you know, I really resonated with that. You made me feel safe now That's awesome. in my own skin. Yeah. And, you know, the power of that is now there's that connection. You know, and you can't make that unless you really get out there and share the vulnerable part of your story that right. you probably like to cling close to, but that can help other people. Exactly. And usually when we're sharing something vulnerable or even something that we think is negative about ourselves, mm -hmm. I mean, generally nine times out of ten in my experience and with the clients that I work with, when they share it, even though it's uncomfortable and it's hard to do and difficult yeah. to get used to, you see people nodding their head. They're yeah. going through the same thing. They have those challenges. They have those negative feelings about mm -hmm. themselves. And connecting over that is so powerful that I think it's absolutely worth it. Yeah. Beautiful. Yeah. Are there any other tips that you want to give to our, our audience before we go? Um, I think just really the one big thing that I encourage people to, to think about, especially mm -hmm. new clients that I'm working with, is kind of create a personality for who it is that you're reaching out to. If you don't know who that is yet, if you're still trying to you know, start a business or write that book, create the personality for the person that you're gonna be sharing it with. Give mm -hmm. them a name, 
you know, decide where they live, what they do for a living, how they spend yeah. their time, what their struggles are, because it's probably going to be really similar to you or someone that you would probably connect with in real life. And creating that persona or finding that person in real life, generally, it's going to make the process of writing that story or sharing that story easier because you know you have a friend on the other side. Yeah. Beautiful. Thank you. Thanks so much for being here and for sharing so much about your background yeah. and the empowering things that you do for authors. Thank you so much for having me. This was a blast. <laughs> Managing money for a small business can be terrifying. I talk with small business owners on a daily basis who aren't quite sure how to end the cycle of being in the hole financially. That's why budgetologist Felicia Jones is here to share some budgeting tips that will help you take control of your finances and breathe a sigh of relief when it comes to your business. Felicia, thank you for the service that you <laughs> offer to the world. <laughs> thank you, thank you so very much. <laughs> yeah, so I've personally experienced the, the financial stress of bad budgeting. I didn't realize what I was doing, but I mm -hmm. kind of figured out from somebody sitting down and looking at my finances that I didn't know how to manage cash flow. So how do, you, how do you help people from the start with even just figuring out that that's the issue for them? Well, you know, the one thing that a lot of people need to do first is just acknowledge that their money exists. Yeah. And that's a big thing with a lot of business owners. You know, we get so caught up with the marketing and sales yeah. and wanting to go out there and show the world that we exist, but sometimes we just need to realize that, hey, the money is here and it's yeah. screaming at us. So the first thing you need to do is just acknowledge that it exists and understand that it needs to be a priority mm -hmm. inside of the business. Yeah. 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 I actually had to put a calendar reminder to once a month look at my QuickBooks and see what's happening on there. You am know, I in the green or am I in the red? <laughs> you know, that's um, one thing that I do tell a lot of business owners and especially solopreneurs. Mm -hmm. I call it the first and the 15th. Every first and 15th, you yeah. take one hour to look at your finances no matter what shape they're in. Yeah. And I say always do it between 6 a.m. and 9 a.m. 9 because after 9 a.m. you should be out there making money. Okay. Because if you, you can't have a budget if there's no money coming in. That's right. just called overspending. Right. So just take that one hour, the first and 15th, and just look at the big picture mm -hmm. so that you'll know what you need to do going forward. So good for you for doing that. Yeah. <laughs> Um, well, it actually s was sparked by somebody that did a little, she did a little, I felt like it was a little scolding in a talk <laughs> one time where she says, you know, first off, before we even get started with anything, you need to know if your business is a business or just an expensive hobby. Ooh, yeah, yeah. that happens a lot because um, <laughs> I have a lot of clients who run very expensive hobbies. Yes. And that's where we have to get to the point of understanding how much money is coming in versus mm -hmm. how much is going out. Yeah. And that's why I always say if you are out spending uh, what you're making, then mm -hmm. it's usually a red flag. <laughs> yeah. What is one of the biggest things that people usually are not paying attention to that's causing them to overspend? Well, it's the, it's the sexy side of business. Mm -hmm. We all want to get out there. We all want to do the marketing, the advertising, yeah. and just do it all. And sometimes we just kind of lose our minds a little bit. Yes. And we want to pay for everything. And I tell a lot of business owners, you cannot buy this success. Mm -hmm. You know, it seems like it, and there's always a tool and a product that'll get you yeah. there faster. But this is a marathon. It's not a sprint. Yeah. And so that is the biggest thing. We just get caught up with what's now. Mm -hmm. And we just need to slow down yeah. and just make some really good financial decisions for our business. Mm -hmm. So what are your biggest tips for having a really financially fit and successful business? Well, the first thing is I like to build every last budget that I work on around giving yourself a salary. Mm -hmm. And that's the one thing I want people to really put that system inside of your business because it's too easy to just forget about it. And then next thing you know, you're making $10,000 a month. Yeah. And if you decide to take a salary, then it will disrupt the entire business flow. Okay. So first thing is give yourself a salary. I don't care if it's $5 a month, $10, it's just a system in the business. Uh -huh. Then of course, the first and 15th, take that one hour on the first and 15th, look at your budget, give yourself a salary. And then also just ask, what did I do last month? and what do I need to do this month right. differently, especially when it comes to making those financial decisions. And the other thing is just to take a deep breath because we're all in these little, uh, we go to networking events or seminars and we get so caught up with like, I want that right now. Yes. And it's just like, no, stop, count to 10 and just take a breath and ask yourself, 
Is this really going to advance my business? Mm -hmm. And then where's the money gonna come from to pay for it? Yeah. Either I need to go make some, or I need to find some wealthy millionaire that's gonna fund me for the rest of my life. Yeah, so, yeah. <laughs> angel investor. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I see a lot of people that are, um, you know, buying these expensive coaching programs and things like that, and they're not really making money yet. Yeah. Um, in my head, it's very challenging because it's like, okay, well, you know, yes, the coaching program might help them learn to make money, but they're not making money, so yes. they're basically kind of in the hole until they start getting that together. You know, the one thing I will say about investing into your business, especially in coaching programs, is yeah. you need to have the bandwidth to uh, get all of that knowledge in, mm -hmm. because most coaches, they're doing a great job. They have great information, but if you are not open and you're not ready to yeah. do the work, to do all of the homework um, that comes with it, then you'll kind of feel like you've wasted a lot of money. Yeah. So if you invest, just be open, have the bandwidth, and be ready to do the work. And um, a lot of a lot of us, sometimes it happens, um, we think it's gonna come really easy without doing any work, so. Yeah, I wish it did. <laughs> I know, I've been Gosh. waiting for that fairy godmother to yeah. just <laughs> drop all this magic money on me. <laughs> right. And so you have a podcast now. Yay. <laughs> yeah, so how's that going? The podcast is going great. It's the Budget School Podcast, and you can find it at budgetschool.co. It has been a lot of fun to just mm -hmm. talk about money. Um, and now I'm starting to get the feedback, and a lot of people are like, yeah, I'm just nodding my head with yeah. everything you're <laughs> saying. And I was like, why don't you leave a review? You know? Yeah. <laughs> but uh, I'm getting a lot of great feedback from it, and I'm really probably hitting some nerves of a lot of people mm -hmm. when it comes to business and money. Yeah. I bet. And you have an online school, too. Yes, it's okay. all budget school. Yes. So I am pretty blatant and to the point. So yes. uh, the online school school is a premier financial education platform yes. specifically for coaches, consultants, and solopreneurs. Mm -hmm. And I take the time to step them through every last dime of their yeah. finances from giving yourself a salary to knowing the numbers in your business. So yeah. it's been a lot of fun putting that together and waking up some some um, very busy business owners. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's a good wake up call. Oh, it is. Because the business stuff is serious, mm -hmm. especially if you want it to be successful. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Well, thank you for all those great tips oh, and for sharing you. a little bit about your budget school. Thank you. Did thank I you for having me. Yeah. Did I miss <laughs> anything? I feel like you've got so much going on. Oh, I can do this for hours. So <laughs> I only have a few minutes. But yes, that's about it right now. If people want to jump on the podcast, yeah. that would be great. And just listen to all the things that you need to do better with your money. <laughs> Perfect. Well, thanks so much. Thank you for having me. <laughs> now that you're feeling a little more in control, it's time to connect with your inner confidence. Susan Golisic, founder and operations goddess at Uninhibited Wellness, is here to share tips for living an uninhibited life and investing in yourself to build the confidence to go for your dreams. So, first off, I need to know what is an uninhibited life and where do I even start with finding <laughs> that? <laughs> so, uninhibited is all about uh, not living to societal constraints, to actually expressing your feelings and your thoughts unconstrained yeah. and just no self-consciousness with it. You know, we're conditioned, we grow up a certain way and we, we have communities, our families, society that says you're supposed to live this way. Right. Um, and we really are constrained and, and we, as we grow older we start to fight against that because we start to understand what is it I really want, what is it I really want to pursue in my life. Okay. And so at Uninhibited Wellness, we really encourage our clients that, you know, you find what you want, find what you're passionate about, yeah. and go for that. Live uninhibitedly. We don't want people to live in this, this should, right? right? We should do this. We should be that way. Well, don't should on yourself. No mm -hmm. one should do that. Yeah. Um, oh, my God. Oh, that should be on a T-shirt. <laughs> right? Don't should on yourself. <laughs> Um, and so pursue what you really want without yeah. constraint. If you, you know, you've talked about how you wear your hair, wear yeah. your hair the way you want it. Um, if you like to color, you know, have a streak of color in it, mm -hmm. that's fine. It's all about you expressing yourself and being you and living the way you want. And when you do that, you're taking advantage of your, you know, the time that you have here because mm -hmm. nobody knows how much we have. Right. Take advantage of that and go for what you want because that's going to bring you more joy. You're going to live a happier life if you actually go for that. Yeah, so the first thing I think of is 
gosh, I need to find new people. <laughs> the first thing I think about is all the people that would be disappointed if I didn't live a certain mm -hmm. way or didn't do this or didn't do that. And, you know, that is the biggest challenge, I think, is our social circle. It is. And the people who kind of provide, um, you know, they give us that boost when we do the things that we're supposed to do. Right. They give us a little cheer. Yeah. And, you know, they kind of tiss tiss when we're doing the things that we're not supposed to do. So right. how do you kind of manage that part of it? You know, that is something that, that everybody has to face. And what, what is really important is when you really get to know who you are and what you really want in your life, mm -hmm. it does mean you have to look at the relationships you're in. Yeah. And are they supportive of you and what you really want? Or do they want you to be constrained to a certain place or person? Yeah. And if that's the case, then maybe they're not the best people to have in your inner circle with you. Yeah. Um, you know, if, if it's certain relationships you need to maintain work-wise or things like that, then you can still maintain them. Um, but it is important that you're close, the closest people around you are your support group, and they encourage yeah. you to go for what you want be who you are, because they're going to see how happy you are, and that's going to inspire them as well. If you yeah. go for what you want and pursue an uninhibited life, then they're going to be like, wow, I, I got to have some of that. I yeah. need to start pursuing <laughs> some of that as well. It really does open up a lot. And, mm -hmm. and it, it does mean taking courage to understand that some people may not accept as I transition yeah. into this place. Um, and hopefully the people that really love you, they'll get there. They'll accept it. Mm -hmm. um, and, and the people that don't, well, maybe they're not the important people to have in your life anyway. Yeah. But it does, it's a practice. It takes a lot of work and it's a process. It doesn't happen overnight. Mm -hmm. You can't change conditioning in one night. You know, that's, right. that's something that takes a while to develop. So what's the first step for someone who, let's say, they love what you're saying. Mm -hmm. They really want to start taking some step to figure out how can they find out what even is an uninhibited life for them. Yeah. You know, how do they get started with pursuing that goal? It really is about learning what you really want and what you really need in your life and, and coming to terms with what those things are. Mm -hmm. um, and so any kind of exercises where there's self-exploration. If you like to journal, and you can journal. If you like to read, you can read um, different books on how other people have done it and learn yeah. some of the steps they've taken. Um, talking to people. Again, your support group, um, whether you need an actual coach or whether you can just go to, to a trusted friend, a mm -hmm. confidant, and just start to talk about, you know, these are the things I really want in my life and the things I want to pursue. Mm -hmm. um, and once you really start to recognize what you want, what, what, what drives your passion, what makes you feel good, and not just feel good in general, but feel good about yourself, mm -hmm. when you start to discover those things, then you can start to say, okay, so now if this is what I want for my life, then these are the potential steps that I can take. Yeah. Um, for example, I started to learn, as I went through a big transition in my life, I started to learn that, wow, I really get a lot of joy out of practicing vulnerability and trying to share my story and, and talk to people about it because if that can help them in any way, because it also continues to help me if I have mm -hmm. the courage to share. And so when I realized that's something that I wanted to do, yeah. then I actually went out and I, I looked into, well, do I want to be a coach then? Because I had been a mentor and I love that. And mm -hmm. I, I said, okay, I can pursue a coaching certification. That's going to give me practice to do yeah. this. Um, I like to write, so I journaled a lot and I kind of created an outline for writing a book. Okay. So those steps all really got me moving into the space of, okay, this is what I want to do. I want to help people. I want to serve people yeah. um, and be able to share more and, and help them share more. Yeah. So, and I think part of it, and it sounds like part that was part of your process is also accepting yourself and you know the things that you do want to um, bring into your life and and just kind of being that person for you first, right? Even before you expect it from other people, right? Exactly. Yeah. And it did take a lot of courage because um, I was an academic. And yeah. there's a certain view of what yes. an academic should do, and it was really difficult to you know, stretch myself and kind of step out of that box and say, mm -hmm. I'm not going to do these things because you expect me to do them because they don't fit with what I want and who I want to be. Yeah. And it was, it took big steps to do that and it was hard. And it, 
Well, I say it took big steps, but it's really baby steps. It felt like big steps, but you yeah. really, and that's what it's about. When you're making transitions in your life, it's about taking those baby steps each day toward that goal because you can go for what you want. Mm -hmm. You know, when we live constrained, we feel like when we're, when we're kids, we're not constrained, right? right we think free. we can do anything, we can accomplish anything, we uh -huh. can have anything we want, and, and, and we dream big. And as we grow older and we start to conform to societal rules, we stop using the word dream because we believe that, no, no, you don't dream anymore. Mm -hmm. I, I have things I'd like to have, but I'm not gonna go for the big, crazy dream. Mm -hmm. um, and living uninhibitedly is, is about, you know, kids really know what's going on, and it's yeah. about expressing yourself and knowing I can actually go for what I dream. Mm -hmm. So beautiful. I love everything that you stand for. Yeah, it's it it's amazing how much more joy you can get out of life mm -hmm. when you really take advantage of the time that you have in every moment. Yeah, beautiful. Yeah, thanks. Is there anything else you'd like to share before mm. we go? Um, I just like to encourage people, you know, to really explore. A am I? We we often get into this area where we're like, no, it's good enough. I don't really deserve to have more than I have. I'm mm -hmm. fine. And, and sometimes that gets them stuck. And so I'd say really kind of explore. Are you really happy where you are? And if you're yeah. not, what could you change? Is it something small? Is it something big? And then reach out to folks. Have those conversations with people to share what you'd really like to do. Mm -hmm. They'll encourage you and then you can start to take the steps and go for it and live uninhibitedly. Nice. Yeah. <laughs> and thanks so much for letting me share my story because I love the support that you're giving women of Denver to pursue those dreams. Yeah, thank you. You're I appreciate welcome. that. So important. Well, thanks for all the value that you've given in this episode. Thank you. And I'll see you soon. Okay, great. Thanks for joining us for another great lineup of super savvy Denver leaders. Don't forget that you deserve to be seen, heard, and known. I'll see you next time.